Hello, my name is uh, Nicola Rossetto. I'm a researcher at the Florence School of Regulation at the European University uh, Institute. We are part of the OneNet project. And in this uh, video lecture, I would like to describe the issue of customer engagement and uh, consumer centricity that we addressed as part of uh, uh, the OneNet project. In this video lecture, I will follow these uh, uh, four questions. Uh, we will first uh, uh, discuss why do we need uh, customer engagement in markets for ancillary services. Then we will uh, look at what are the barriers for uh, customer engagement, what are the possible solutions to address those barriers that we discussed and explore in the OneNet project, and finally, we will close by looking at the issue of consumer centricity and what it means. Let's start. So first of all, why do we need to engage customers in markets for uh, ancillary services, also known as uh, uh, markets for system services or more recently, flexibility uh, markets? As uh, probably some of you uh, know, uh, system operation is becoming uh, increasingly challenging and uh, traditional approaches to it uh, are becoming uh, more expensive, expensive. And this is uh, uh, basically due to the uh, increasing penetration of uh, renewable energy sources and in particular weather dependent renewable energy sources such as wind and sun. Those resources are also more distributed in the system, so they are not only connected at the transmission level, but also uh, at the distribution level. And on the other end, uh, we are observing uh, an increasing electrification of end uses, which is changing uh, the patterns of uh, uh, electricity demand. And this is making, as I said, system operation more challenging. At the same time, those same trends, together with the, the increasing digitalization of distribution grids of uh, uh, customers of consumer premises, is providing new opportunities, uh, new resources that can be exploited to actually address the challenges, the new challenges or the increasing challenges to system operation. So the idea is uh, we need to engage customer because in this way we can activate their demand, we can explore the potential of flexible electricity demand, and this would allow us to deal better with a variable weather-dependent distributed electricity generation. Customer engagement. Everybody speak about it. Uh, it's quite uh, a bit of time now. It's a kind of holy grail though, because Concrete developments, concrete achievements have been so far, uh, I would say, not exciting. In particular, when we look at uh, uh, smaller electricity uh, customers like uh, households, like uh, small and medium enterprises. Results, we are making progress, but not so, so much. And uh, uh, the idea is that there are barriers uh, to their engagement and uh, Indeed, the issue of customer engagement is inherently a multidimensional uh, problem due to the heterogeneity of consumers, due to the fact that the, these markets have many specific features. They differ country to country, uh, product, uh, from product to another product. So different barriers play different roles uh, in different markets. Uh, the OneNet project uh, looked, among other things, at this issue uh, and tried to identify possible recommendations, uh, in particular via desk research, via an assessment of the uh, demonstrations that were implemented uh, during the project, and also by interacting with uh, experts, with practitioners, and in general with uh, stakeholders. So, let's look at these barriers. Uh, we could, uh, let's say, organize those barriers in four groups. First of all, 
we have technical barriers. There is a, a technical dimension that in some cases can prevent customers from engaging in those markets, from, uh, can prevent customers from offering uh, their flexibility in those markets and be rewarded for that. Uh, of course, uh, trying to uh, highlight the most relevant subtypes of barriers, we can list uh, the lack of adequate metering and communication infrastructure, the lack of uh, interoperable data exchange architectures, and also the lack of user-friendly uh, interfaces. But it's not only an issue of technology, an issue of uh, infrastructure. It's also an issue of uh, economics. Uh, indeed, participation by customers in markets for uh, ancillary services can be challenging because uh, there is limited value in uh, flexibility, so little money is available on the table, because the business uh, of uh, um, offering flexibility, uh, offering ancillary services can be um, risky, uh, revenue streams are not necessarily uh, well predictable, and also because there are high transaction costs. The participation in those markets may lead to other costs uh, that uh, basically destroy the uh, economic viability of uh, the profitability of participating in those markets. Beyond technical and economic barriers, we have also legal barriers. So sometimes participation could in principle be economically viable and technically possible, but then there are rules, uh, there are pieces of uh, uh, legislation or regulation that uh, prevent uh, uh, customers from engaging. And uh, um, as you maybe know, uh, rules can exclude distributed energy resources, like those that are installed at the customer premises, to participate in those markets. This exclusion can be uh, total or, let's say, it can be indirect, in the sense that requirements are so tough that basically DERs cannot, uh, uh, um, cannot deal with them, cannot uh, satisfy them. Beyond this, uh, uh, there are issues of privacy. There are issues of uh, consumer data access. So some parties may not have the right to access the data of consumers which are needed to develop uh, business to implement the various offers. And then finally, we may have uh, problems with uh, contracts um, that can be too uh, hard to, to manage or to, uh, not enough flexible to ensure participation by customer. Finally, we have another group of barriers, behavioral barriers. So sometimes participation is technically possible, economically viable, legally allowed, but nonetheless it may not happen. And this can be because there are characteristics uh, of customers that uh, prevent them from participation. And uh, if you think in particular at residential customers, or, uh, at uh, SMEs, you know, we might have issues with uh, a lack of awareness, a lack of interest in participation in this market. So maybe it's rational to do that, but uh, I, I don't care. There could be limited uh, skills to manage, to process all the information needed to participate in these markets. And finally, uh, there is a, a tendency to stick with the status quo. So inertia, uh, these markets are new, uh, customers sometimes are very slow in entering uh, in new areas, in new activities, if they are not properly pushed. So what do we do to overcome uh, those uh, uh, barriers? In the OneNet project, we look at the possible recommendations addressing the various actors, the various stakeholders, policymakers involved in markets for ancillary services. Let's start from the technical barriers. Clearly, uh, one first recommendation is that we need to deploy the infrastructure needed to um, 
meter and communicate uh, uh, the data about the consumption and production of uh, customers. Then we need to uh, introduce interoperable data exchange uh, uh, architecture to allow the parties uh, to communicate the data so that uh, uh, participation to markets can be meaningful. And finally, we can uh, develop and deploy user-friendly uh, solutions that uh, uh, are able to give control power to uh, consumers and to their uh, intermediaries. In terms of economic barriers, well, we saw that uh, sometimes flexibility uh, and ancillary services more in general has not enough value attached to it. Then the uh, recommendation is to uh, allow, for instance, value stacking. So the possibility to participate with the same assets to more markets so that you can eventually stake up the various revenue streams and overall get um, something which is uh, attractive from an economic point of view. So participation to multiple markets, possibility to forward bids to multiple markets. Uh, but then also expand access to the data because if there is data about the network about market, about consumers, then also we can have more certainty, more predictability about uh, the revenue streams associated with participation in these markets. And finally, of course, uh, design markets and uh, uh, products that uh, enable automation, that enable aggregation of uh, uh, many smaller, small consumers and eventually also contestability of consumer. In this way, the idea, some of the transaction cost that we that represent a barrier can actually be uh, dealt with, they can be reduced. Regarding legal barriers, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, the first thing to, to do is to remove all those rules that are often a legacy of the past and that prevent uh, distributed energy resources, so the resources at the premises of customers, from participating in, uh, in those markets. But then, uh, in terms of uh, especially regulation of system operation, uh, an important uh, recommendation is to promote the adoption and development of regulatory frameworks that uh, foster system operation to rely on uh, the flexibility on the ancillary services that customers can provide to operate the system and not just invest uh, in uh, an expanded uh, infrastructure. And finally, in terms of uh, legal recommendation, the idea to reconsider the rules about uh, consumer protection, about privacy, uh, in a way that they still protect the consumer but uh, are not uh, uh, let's say, um, an invaluable uh, and uh, an overcomable barrier for participation in those markets. Finally, looking at behavioral uh, barriers, uh, an important first recommendation is to promote awareness, to try and educate uh, customers, knowing of course that not all of them will still be interested in the matter, but nonetheless education is important. Then market parties should invest in understanding better their customers and in developing more tailored solutions, more tailored offers that are able not only to um, satisfy their rational preferences but also their behavioral biases. And in this sense, uh, the third recommendation is to use, to develop and use uh, opt-out solution, default solution, that uh, keep in mind the fact that customers, especially the smaller one, uh, have a high degree of inertia. Of course, these are general recommendations and then uh, they need to be assessed um, and eventually tailored to the specific country, to the specific market that uh, is taken into consideration. Having said that, let me uh, allow to close this video lecture by reflecting a bit on the concept of consumer centricity. 
because this is another uh, expression that is often used. And uh, the idea is that a more consumer-centric uh, set of markets for ancillary services could be helpful to uh, foster customer engagement and then uh, address the problem that I described at the beginning. Um, yes, this is uh, true, but it's clear that this concept is uh, not easy to grasp. Uh, there is no clear definition uh, around. Uh, and one that project we thought about it, uh, we came up uh, with uh, a definition with various elements in it, uh, deriving from uh, uh, this starting point. Consumer centricity means to take the point of view of the consumer when you define something, a product, a market, a rule, a piece of legislation. Uh, consumer centricity means to allow consumers to benefit from something, but also to be able to choose truly uh, what to do and what not to do. In this sense, uh, a consumer-centric market is a market that uh, allows customization, that allows more control for customers. If you take this uh, uh, definition, this starting point, you can imagine that uh, electricity markets are traditionally not very much consumer-centric and uh, markets for ancillary services even less. And actually there are sometimes good reasons for, for that because uh, the electricity system is very sophisticated and there are many uh, requirements at stake. Nonetheless, uh, we can do something about it. Uh, and actually, uh, you can imagine that uh, when developing those markets for ancillary services, those products to be traded uh, to satisfy the needs of system operators, well, certain choices would allow you to have more consumer-centric markets, more consumer-centric products. Here, I just uh, provide you with a, a graph that is in another deliverable of the OneNet project. And, and you see certain markets, uh, according to our definition and our assessment, are more consumer-centric than others. Still, of course, there are system needs, there are system requirements that pose limits to the customability of the experience of customers and in this sense and this is really my final remark uh, aggregation the role of intermediaries like aggregators is essential to reconcile the necessary requirements of system operation with the aspiration of customers to have uh, a participation and experience that fits their specific preferences that give them uh, power. And uh, therefore, this would really be a key pillar for any consumer-centric market, a key pillar for any serious strategy of fostering customer engagement. And with this, uh, I thank you for listening and uh, see you in another occasion. Thank you.